Hey everybody and welcome back to a beginner's tutorial for Midjourney. Midjourney, as we said previously, is an AI um, software that can generate absolutely gorgeous artwork just with text. You do not have to be a pro artist at all. With just some text, you can create some beautiful artwork like this lily pad scene, or Yoda as Snoop Dogg, or this cute baby flying on a drone at 60 miles an hour. Anything's possible as long as you've got imagination and you know how to make that into text. A bunch of years ago, I worked at a startup and one of the things we had to do was create marketing assets and ad campaigns using anything we could find from stock photos. It wasn't pretty. Um, they were always inauthentic and they always felt, you know, they just didn't quite convey the message. Um, but we couldn't spend $2,000 on a photo shoot. And just compare that to what you're looking at right now. I had to create marketing assets for a ramen noodle company and I put this together. I mean, this took just a little bit of time and a few cents of my, of my pro plan and I got a beautiful image that's full of personality with a bunch of people with, you know, cool hair and stylistic and they all feel pretty authentic. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this is a real shot. Here's another one. This one's really funky. I mean, these people have like cool style and this yellow, you know, funky get up and, you know, interesting hair. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think it's, uh, you know, believable and interesting. Um, sometimes you get weird AI mess ups where you get like a second extra hand, which I did not ask for at all, but you know, AI makes a little mistakes. But there are funny mistakes anyway. But now I have these superpowers with Midjourney that I can have like a full photo shoot of original people with style and personality and good fashion and, you know, and in interesting dynamic looking scenes. And I can do all of that with just a laptop and a subscription to Midjourney. And I can do this all in a short amount of time. So let's find out a lot more about how to use our new superpowers and uh, see how we can get the most out of this system. Um, before we continue, let's just do a quick word about uh, cost and subscription. You basically, they'll give you a 25, you know, about 25 images to try out as a trial, but you do need to subscribe to, you know, beyond that. And like the $10 a month plan or $8 if you pay per year um, gets you about 200 images per month. Um, the $30 plan has about 15 hours worth of, I think like a thousand images or so. And unlimited relaxed generation means that you get slow, fast generation as you get fast responses and slow and relaxed means slower responses. One thing to note that's really important for all of this is in the basic and standard plan, all the image generation that you do is actually happening in public. So if you have something that's private or just sensitive, so it is actually being generated in the actual uh, you know, members gallery right in public. People probably won't notice because there's so many images being made, but it's something to take notice of. If you go for the pro plan, which is $48 a month, you actually get stealth image generation, which you can actually do private stuff and no one can see that except for you. As I mentioned last time, when you join Midjourney, you get thrown into this Discord server. That's where the whole uh, app happens. And you'll get thrown into one of these newbie groups where you can do image generation, um, you know, with the prompt down below, like imagine. But we're gonna try something else that we mentioned last time that we're gonna go into parameters. Parameters go like this. You use that standard imagine command that we mentioned. Then you write your prompt, which is whatever you wanna write, a dog on the beach or whatever it is. And then you get to use these parameters and there's a bunch of different ones. You put two hyphens, the word and the value. So we're gonna try out to use aspect ratio first. It's kind of important because out of the box you get a square image, meaning by default, Midjourney will um, generate for you a square image. But it, let's say you want something that fits like a YouTube video, like a, a 16 by nine style, or you want something that's kind of tall and narrow for like a you know wallpaper for a, cell for a smartphone. So then you can add dash dash aspect and then the value. Let's try to use it ourselves. Okay, so let's go down below. We're gonna write our command imagine and let's write college kids in, in a funky apartment um, eating ramen noodles and smiling at camera. Um, and I'm going to add aspect 16 by 9 so it will look good like on a youtube video and fit nicely so out of the box you can already see that this preview of the four images is a definitely 16 by 9 it's definitely not your standard square at all it's definitely um wider than it is tall um and if we go for upscale we're gonna get that full version of an image and uh, let's just go with that first one we pressed upscale on one, so that's this image, and we're going to send to the Midjourney bot a request to give me a full quality image. Okay, so let's check out that image on our web gallery. We press on the web button. 
Okay, here's our image. We see the prompt that we used. And we look here, we use the aspect ratio um, tag. And we see the size of 1664 by 960, which is 16 by 9 ratio. So we see that using a parameter like this can really help us. Now, I got to say, I mean, it's really impressive that AI can create any image based on my prompt, but I wouldn't want to use this for my ad campaign. So let's try to redo the prompt and get closer to real authentic results. Let's use the imagine command again. Let's take this exact same prompt and redo it. But this time at the end, let's add version 5. You can also write version if you want, not just V. Wow, just by adding version 5 alone, and that's the only difference we did before the first one and the second one, I mean, the results we're getting are a lot more photorealistic. I mean, these people look a lot more authentic. Um, I'm really impressed. There's a huge difference between the previous image and this image. If you just uh, recall, look at this. I mean, it kind of almost looks illustrated. You know, there's kind of this weird face here. It almost looks like it was drawn by, by paint or, you know, Photoshop. But this looks pretty darn photorealistic to me. Now let's see if we can even push this a bit farther. Now let's use the exact same prompt we used as before. And let's copy again the, and paste it in. You have to, it has to go inside that little black box. Now I want to try something. At the end of this, let's say by Wes Anderson. If anybody knows Wes Anderson, he's a director, he's made a bunch of movies, and he's got a very quirky sort of colorful style and everything looks, I mean, the, the characters in his, in his movies are a lot quirkier and a little kind of have a funny fashion. So let's see if just by adding the word Wes Anderson, and you could do any name, and, you know, Steven Spielberg or anybody under the sun, um, and see if it affects, and you can see if it has any um, implications. But I'm hoping we're going to get a quirkier look. Maybe that's what we want for our ad campaign. Oh my gosh. If you can see, this may, if this is the look you're going for, if it is, then you can see that just by adding the word Wes Anderson, it immediately has very significant uh, effects. The background, you know, apartment is a way quirkier. The colors are like weird and yellow and mustard. And the characters that come out of it are a lot, you know, more Wes Anderson style, you know, kind of nerdy a bit. You know, you got the glasses and a little bit goofy looking. The hair is a little bit, you know, flowier and more 80s and whatever. I mean, it has significant changes just by adding Wes Anderson or any other name out there. Um, it has a huge change. So you can now craft a really um, specific image. Let's see if we can get a color in this Wes Anderson. Let's try to push like the greens. Let's go um, in a funky green apartment, eating ramen noodles and smiling camera. Let's add one more funky thing. Let's say they are um, and throwing noodles. Let's, maybe that goes too far, but let's see what happens. Wow, again, remember, if this is the look you're going for, then okay. But the fact is, I mean, we've got the green thing. Now, I have to admit, it kind of thought that I wanted the fashion to be green, so there's a lot more green in there, and the apartment isn't green. But the fact is, I mean, it definitely affected the results a lot. I made a lot, you know, adding the throwing noodles thing, they're a little more sort of goofy and wild with their, with their looks. Um, let's get them, let's put some beanies on them. Let's get some, some hats. Let's say, um, on a cold winter day, and let's say college kids wearing beanies. I mean, there it is. I mean, they've got beanies. I mean, they're all wearing beanies. Maybe I could randomize it, but they've all got hats now. I mean, it changed the look a lot from the previous image. Um, but the fact is you can really craft your, your style exactly how you want. Look at these guys. They're not even looking at the camera. They're kind of just all, you know, focused on the food. Um, so you can keep going and trying different images until you find something that's really crazy. Let's again, let's try something completely different. Let's again, let's go with the same style, the same general idea. But let's take out the part about the, uh, the apartments. If, you know, maybe let's say a, a forest um, next to a uh, campfire. 
Wow. So now we kind of lost the, the noodles thing. You know, we kind of lost the ramen noodles thing, but I mean, the winter scene, like, so the outdoor winter, um, campfire scene is, I mean, is really strong. I mean, these guys got like an original fashion. The beanies look great. Um, this fire looks legitimate. It looks real. It looks really part of the scene. The, the forest looks like part of the scene. I mean, you can see how there's so much more powerful than stock photos or going to a stock photo site. I mean, there's a different world. Um, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of doing photos. Let's, we're going to continue and see how we can even go one step further. I'm thinking for the next episode, we want to try image prompts. Image prompts are really easy to use. We're going to find out about them all next episode, but um, all you have to do is throw in URL of your image before the prompt, and that will influence how the image comes out. So maybe you put a picture of yourself up there, and then you're going to be the guy in the campfire with a beanie on your head. So let's try that next time. Okay, well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Like, subscribe, comment. We'd love to hear how's it going. Um, and looking forward to talking to you guys soon next time. Bye.